In the classic ILPAC experiment, preparing a standard solution of potassium hydrogen phthalate, students were asked to weigh out between 4.8 and 5.4 grams of potassium hydrogen phthalate. They might do so into a weighing boat such as this and record their results in their lab laboratory book. Zero point nine two grams. The OPAC course reminds the reader that potassium hydrogen phthalate is a stable compound, doesn't react with the air, it has a high molar mass, is soluble in water and when we use it in a reaction it reacts quite rapidly. Well if we want between 4.8 and 5.4 and we had 0.9 to start with obviously we need about 5.7 or just over in the weighing boat here. Now must be careful not to spill any of the material onto the balance when one weighs out this way and in fact that is one of the drawbacks, potential mistakes of the techniques I'm using here. So there's 5.73, just a little bit more and we've got 5.84 grams of potassium hydrogen phthalate. Five point eight four grams. We would then transfer the salt to a two fifty mil beaker and reweigh the boat boat to see if any was remaining on the boat there. So mass after transfer. One point zero three grams. Thus by subtraction of the last mass from the previous mass we can determine how much potassium hydrogen phthalate is actually in the beaker in this case we've got 4.81 grams and we're just within the criteria of the practical 4.8 to 5.4 we next need to add some distilled water and since we're going to be making up 250 mils of solution we can add at least 100 mils of water to the beaker quite comfortably. Students then need to stir and this does take some minutes. In fact to speed things up a little I think I'll add a little bit more water. So students would be then required to stir until the potassium hydrogen phthalate has completely dissolved in the water. commented before this does take a few minutes
and it's worth sort of crushing the last few crystals with the glass rod in order to get them to dissolve quicker. Almost there. Important not to rush this last part of the dissolving process. One or two tiny last crystals still yet to go. Well, we do need to stir just a few seconds longer. And finally, the crystals have totally disappeared and we've dissolved our salt. The next stage is to transfer all of the solution into the volumetric flask. We use a funnel to assist that process. And the concept is to make sure that nothing, everything goes inside the flask. Nothing is spilled outside, no drops, and we don't lose any of the material. So what in fact we might do to begin with is to just rinse down our glass rod which has got some solution sticking to it um, before we put that down on the bench or into a beaker perhaps. So carefully rinse the glass rod and we're ensured then that all the solution down. Some did go onto the funnel as we touched the funnel there, so just make sure that those droplets are rinsed down. And when you're rinsing, it's important not to touch the tip of the wash bottle onto any of the glassware. We can now pour the mixture in to the volumetric flask carefully. Solution, I should say. Remember when we put about 100 to 150 mils of water into the beaker initially so we should have plenty of volume left for washing and then again we can start to rinse the beaker again ensuring that we don't touch the tip of the wash bottle onto the beaker that's one rinse making sure that we rinse down the sides of the beaker all the way around two rinses three, four, and five. So now we're sure that all of the solution has gone into the beaker, into the volumetric flask rather. Our last step is to rinse down the funnel. We've now done that can go inside the beaker and finally fill up to the mark which on this flask is here uh, with distilled water just need an additional bottle now sometimes when these bottles are filled up they leak so make sure you don't hold them over your lab book Now a common problem with students is to actually overshoot the mark at the end um, and the way to avoid that is to use a dropping pipette um, for the last part of the 
filling. Just need to get one of those. So now with the pipette, also retrieve the label, we can add water dropwise, lowering our head down to the level of the meniscus in the flask. Slowly, and now we're quite near, we can now add dropwise so that we make sure that the volume isn't overshooting there. The final step is to put the stopper in and invert the flask and shake and we need to do that again at least five times. So there is our standard solution. All it remains is to write a label on the bottle. And we've got 4.81 grams in the solution there. We've yet to determine the concentration. Students would also initial the label to identify it. Preparing a standard solution of potassium, hydrogen, phthalate.